Brentley from Owensboro, Kentucky, hit me up. He said, what do you think about the Netflix show about Urban Meyer in Florida? Oh, I have a lot of thoughts about it, Brentley. Now, this is not official, 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 but it's pretty official. How do we know? Well, Brandon Seiler was a linebacker at Florida back in the day. He posted a screenshot of an email he got from Netflix that confirmed a documentary called Swamp Kings that chronicles Florida's run 06 to 09 is set to debut August 23rd of this year. This is not like Euphoria, where apparently I'm going to wait until 2025 for actors already in their 20s to continue to portray high school kids. No, we get Swamp Kings right before the kickoff of the 2023 season the way God intended. This could be great. Could also be terrible. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with how documentaries work, it really all comes down to creative and cooperation. That's the way documentaries have always been. My favorite college football documentary of all time is the 30 for 30 about SMU, Pony Excess. Go find it. It's in the archives at ESPN. Brilliantly done. And they got all the power players, except for Sherwood Blunt, defiant to this day, on the record. They got everybody who was anybody around that scandal to talk. And they took their time and they laid it out meticulously. And if you go into that thing not knowing one bit of fact-based detail about the SMU cheating scandal, you'll walk away with a full education on it. So that is the barometer by which I judge all college football and sports documentaries. On a scale of one to pony excess, what will Swamp Kings rate? Well, we don't have to wait long to find out. So anyway, my thoughts, since you asked me, Creative and cooperation. Number one, what's the creative vision? Who called the editorial shots? Do they really, really understand the weeds of what that era was like? Are they willing to ask the tough questions about that era? Let's face it now, you had a transcendent talent like Tim Tebow. You had a generational head coach, troubled as it turned out, but a generational head coach in Urban Meyer. You had star players littered all over that roster. But you also had a future serial killer on the roster. You also had several dozen guys that were going to go on to serve time in prison on that roster. You can't tell the entire story of that period of Florida football without touching on all that. If they do, it could be classic. And also, cooperation. We don't know who they got to sit down to be interviewed for this. Are we going to hear from Urban Meyer? Are we going to hear from Tim Tebow? Who else are we going to hear from? Could be really fun. I remember in 2009, uh, this is long before anyone ever paid me to go to a football game, I can assure you. And it was also the time where I could not afford to go to games like the SEC championship game. So I go up to Atlanta with a buddy of mine, and this is Saban versus Meyer. This is Bama versus Florida part two. This is the 09 game. And Florida's looking to cap a run that may very well coronate them as the greatest team of all time because they were already coming off a national championship year all those dudes come back this is the classic Tebow I'm coming back let's do it again and they go undefeated regular season they go to Atlanta they meet Bama and I remember going under the Georgia Dome rest in peace Georgia Dome I remember going under the Georgia Dome with my buddy before the game and um, Florida's bus is pulled up and so the team gets off. And this is a point in my life where I'm not used to seeing this. So the team gets off. And there were, there were twins, the Pouncey twins, walk by and just look ready to annihilate someone. But I'll tell you what I never forgot. And I was telling Jesse this earlier today, unfiltered. I'll tell you a sanitized version of it. Aaron Hernandez walked by. Aaron Hernandez had a different look in his eye than any athlete I'd ever seen. Aaron Hernandez had a different way about him and gave off a different vibe than any human I had ever been around. And um, I'll leave that where it is. It stuck with me to this day that sticks with me. These games were so huge. This period of Florida football and then college football was so huge. I think it may be accurate to say that if you were to go back and you were to just chart like the lineage of college football, if you want to look for peaks in the sport, if you want to look for moments where the sport has never felt bigger, those games between Bama and Florida, they weren't even national title games. Those were bigger than the national title both years. Both years, they were one versus two. It's Saban versus Meyer. It's, it's Urban Meyer being the king of the SEC after everyone doubted him when he got hired. And if you don't believe me, 
go down south and ask some people who are man enough to be honest with you what they thought when this dude from Utah got hired to come into the big bad SEC. And they'll tell you they laughed at it. And they thought that Mickey Mouse conference he's in out there, some of those offensive tricks, that smoke and mirror offense he runs out there, it's not going to work in the SEC. He completely redefined offensive football in the SEC. He came in and out-recruited everyone. He redefined the standard of what it was to recruit in the SEC. He wasn't from here. He had never been here. He has got a death grip on the SEC. Saban comes to Bama. Two years in, he gets his first shot at him. They lead in Atlanta going into the fourth quarter. Tim Tebow does what he does. Florida wins 31-20. And the entire 2009 season, I, oh man, I'll never forget it. It's like everybody views it as a formality. And in reality, both of them are having to dogfight to get back to Atlanta, but everyone is building up like it's a prize fight. They're promoting it. Week five, week six, week seven, like it's already scheduled. And they both get to Atlanta undefeated. That moment, going into that 2009 SEC championship game, that's as big as college football has ever felt to me. That's pre-playoff. That is, that is in a world where even though you're both spotless and you're both one versus two, there's no safety net because you've got a two-team playoff. It's the BCS era. Number one's going to play number two. And so they know, losers going home. That felt like the national championship game. It was, I, you had to be there. I guess you had to be there. So is that the story this documentary is going to tell? We will see. It is due out in a little over two months, Swamp Kings on Netflix. Maybe we'll do a watch along.